Thanks for checking out this video. So as promised, I already did a ranking review of all the stories from Creepshow Season 2. I have a ranking review for Creepshow Season 1. Uh, those are on my channel in the playlist for the Creepshow series reviews. Um, so now I'm doing kind of the overall ranking for me personally. So I know when I go over this, there are going to be plenty of people out there who are just like, that is not the way I would rank it at all. And that's why I would love for you, if you want to take the time to do so, to rank all of them yourself and put it in the comments because I really do enjoy seeing how different everyone's rankings end up being for this. After I did it for season one, um, I know that I had a lot of people who were saying, this is what my ranking is. This is a little bit tougher because there's a lot more. So, But this will include season one, season two, and all the special episode stories. So let me get started on it. There are 24 total. So my number 24, the last one, is By the Silver Water of Lake Champlain. Now that was the one done by Tom Savini with like the creature on the on the beach side, or that it beached itself or something. It was, I just didn't like the way the story came together. It felt, just didn't feel right. Um, wasn't that interesting, wasn't that great. I wanted to like it more because of Savini. Number 23, The Right Snuff from Season 2. That was the one uh, with Breck and Meyer. Uh, and Jason Quanton, I think is his name, uh, in space. Uh, I just felt like it was too slow, not enough going on. Uh, it was just boring in the end. Number 22, Dead and Breakfast, also from season two. I felt like the story was very lackluster for this one, although the acting by Thomas C. Howell and Al Allie Larder were quite good. So that's my number 22. Number 21, All Hallows' Eve from season one. That one was about the kids who, you know, were terrorizing people kind of on Halloween night, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that one just really didn't catch my interest. I know some people who really loved it. I didn't think the story really came together all that well. Um, number 20, Lydia Lane's Better Half from season one. That is the one with the lady who, you know, gets that, I guess it's like an award or something, spike in the other one's head, and then she's stuck on the elevator with her. Um, story was okay conceptually, but the way it was pulled off, not so great. Uh, number 19, Times is Tough in Musky Holler from season one. That one, uh, again, problem with the story. It seemed kind of rushed. It seemed like there were a lot of more interesting things they could have done with that story. It was just eh. Uh, number 18, Gray Matter. Interesting concept. Once again, I just don't think the story really came together. That one was from season one. Uh, that one was Kevin, uh, Kevin, oh my God, Stephen King inspired. That was based off a of Stephen King short story. So the, you know, the base material is really good. It just didn't make it. The translation didn't go well to the screenplay. Let me say number 17 within the walls of madness. That's from season two. Now this one, interesting story. I like the way it was done for the most part. It seemed a bit slow and the CGI in that were, was really, really bad. Uh, so that's why I put it at number 17. Number 16, Sibling Rivalry, also from season two. This one was fun. I like the comedy level to it, and the acting was quite well done. Interesting concept for a story. Uh, it's just CGI was wonky, uh, and it just felt a little bit rushed, but it was still solid. I still enjoyed this one enough. Um, number 15, Bad Wolf Down from season one. I know there are a lot of people who love this one. I felt like the story didn't come together all that well. It felt rushed. It felt not as interesting as it could have been, but practical effects in it were quite good, especially the wolves. That's what that one was. Um, oh, and I forgot to tell you what the other ones were. Um, Within the Walls of Madness was the kind of HP Lovecraft inspired ones that has that cave scene. Sibling rivalry was the two the one where the one sibling saying her brother is trying to kill her, and then uh, Bad Wolf Down is the kind of like World War Two Nazis versus werewolves film, and like I was saying, like I think a lot of people really like the fun of the concept of that. I did too, but I just didn't feel like the story was the best. It was fun enough though, and like I said, practical effects were really good. The wolves look good, uh, so I did like it enough. The number 14 slot is Night of the Living Late Show. That one's from season two. That was the one with Justin Long and their, their fusing of real life with the movie Horror Express. Uh, that was really interesting to me. I really did enjoy that one. It they, they made it definitely too long. That was an entire episode. 
Uh, it didn't feel like it needed that time. It really had pacing issues for that reason, but acted well, looked really cool, and good concept. I, I liked it overall. Number 13, Knight of the Paw. That's the one that was basically a takeoff of the monkey's paw, basically. Uh, there was a lot of fun in that one. I think it was directed really well. The acting was outstanding in that one. Um, just a, a good kind of update for an old story, in my opinion. That was from season one. Uh, number 12, this was one of the special ones. Twittering from the Circus of the, of the Dead. Now, this is one of the ones that was animated. And I know a lot of people didn't like this because it was doing a lot of stuff, even though it was animated with text messaging, basically. Or posting on Twitter, I think is what it was. Which, you know, it's in the title, obviously. Uh, I thought it was fun. I thought the, the idea was fun. I thought the animation looked really good. And... It was good pacing. It really was good pacing. I, I actually enjoyed that. I know a lot of people didn't, but I enjoyed it. Number 11 from season two, Model Kid. That one was quite fun. The practical effects were great. That was the one with the kid um, bringing his figures to life. He was creating all the old creature models and bringing them to life to take revenge for him. Oh, and sorry, Twittering from the Circus of the Dead was basically what it says. Twittering a young woman posting on Twitter from A Circus of the Dead, which was fun. Yeah, but Model Kid at number 11, I did enjoy that one a good amount. That's why it's at my number 11. Now, number 10 from season one, The Companion. That's the one where the kid's being bullied, and then he gets some backup from that kind of scarecrow thing. I thought the practical effects in that one were particularly good. I thought the story was good. I thought it moved uh, decent pacing. It was a good one. I enjoyed it. Number nine from season two, Pesticide. The story was pretty simplistic with this one, but the acting was really good. Josh McDermott, Keith David, Ashley Lawrence, they all did really good jobs. And they went really big with some of the practical effects. Yes, some of the CGI, especially the ending of that one, wasn't that great. That was the one where it's a exterminator who shows up and there's... Um, another problem that he gets asked to take care of that's a moral issue. Now that one, um, I thought it was fun overall. I thought it was really well pulled off. Now, like I said, the story wasn't the best, but how they pulled it off, I thought looked good, great acting. So that made up for a lot in my opinion. That's why it's at number nine. At number eight from season two, Pipe Screams. This one was a lot of fun. The pacing was great in it. The ending was okay, not super, it, it was kind of satisfying in the end, they could have gone a little bit bigger in the ending, but that doesn't matter, because every every other part leading up to that was a lot of fun, funny, really well acted, there's a this element of just like not really knowing where it's actually going to go, so I really did enjoy that one, that's why that's my number eight. Now number seven is one of the other special ones, Survivor Type. Now, that was the one also animated that was based off of another Stephen King short story that was voiced by Kiefer Sutherland, who did an excellent job. And it was about the guy stranded on an island, and he you know, has to go to extreme measures, basically. You should definitely see it if you haven't. It's great. Uh, that's why it's my number seven. Now, number six from season one, Skin Crawlers. I thought Skin Crawlers was really good. That was a great fusion. I believe that was the one that starred Dana Gould. And it was a really great fusion of comedy and horror, in my opinion. It was a really good script for it. And it was just basically about a person who was looking for an easy way toward weight loss and was, you know, had pest, uh, pest, parasites inhabit their body through this company. And then obviously things go wrong, basically. But really good, really well done. That's why it's my number six. Number five, also from season one, The Man in the Suitcase. That's the one with the djinn, or the djinn, or the genie, as people would say, in a suitcase all folded in there. The way directorially that was pulled off in the acting, really good. Uh, technical execution was great with that one, and the CGI they used even looked pretty good, too. Um, that one was very compelling and very interesting, and that's why it's so high up. I really did enjoy it. So that was my number five. Number four, House of the Head from season one. That was the one uh, based on a story by Josh Mallerman, who actually also wrote the screenplay for that one, with the little girl who who the uh, the little zombie was in her dollhouse, and then it showed up as like a big head. Um, super awesome. Love it, love it, love it. The way it was shot, wonderful. The story, unbelievably excellent. Very, very original. So that's why it got so high for me. So that's House of the Head 
at number four. Number three, it, also from season one, The Finger. Now, The Finger is the one where we get Bob, the creature. I know everyone's kind of heard about Bob at this point. It was a practical effects creature, which is why it looks so good. And DJ Qualls was the lead actor in that who did an outstanding job in that role, I really think. There's so much comedy to it, but there's so much interest in where it's going to go and so much interest in the horror aspects of it as well. So that is a wonderful one, and that's why it's at my number three. Number two from season two, Public Television of the Dead. Obviously, that's the one with Ted Raimi, the public television shows, and the evil dead craziness that ensues when the Necronomicon is brought onto the show. That one is so excellently done. Great story, great nostalgia factor to it. Um, wonderful acting, just a joy, just a joy. I love that one so much. I wish that one was longer, actually. From that season, I think instead of the, um, the late show one with Justin Long, I think that public television of the dead should have been the longer one for sure. And that brings me to my number one, which some of you probably already know what it is. Uh, one of the specials was the Shapeshifters Anonymous episode, or story. That one was so, so good. Acting was really awesome. The concept was super original, super fun. Lots of practical effects thrown into it that really worked. Lots of awesome action. The mythology that went into that one was amazing. That's the one about a bunch of shapeshifters who have like a shapeshifters anonymous uh, meeting that goes on and then they find out that Santa Claus is trying to come and kill them among uh, along with all his kind of mall Santa Claus disciples. It is an unreal amount of fun and a lot of good laughs and that's why shapeshifters anonymous is my number one. So like I said I would love to see what your opinions are on these. Um, put your list down there if you're willing to do it. Um, and even if you if, if you don't want to go through all of them, you can just be like, these are just the ones I like from season one and two. Or if you just want to do season two or just season one or just the specials, whatever you want to do. I'm very much interested in seeing what your favorites were. Or that's another thing. If you just want to say, these are my top three or these are my top five, go for it. I, I'm just very interested to see that. But do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet, because that is how I grow this channel and, you know, make even bigger our nerdy horror community right here because that's the reason I started doing this is so I could actually talk to like-minded horror fans about horror nerdy stuff because I don't have people who live near me who I can talk to about that stuff unfortunately so you guys are my community you are my horror friends basically literally you are <laughs> I don't really have any other horror friends other than the people I've met through here to be honest so um yeah hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up you know, videos like this or my normal movie reviews or any of that stuff. But regardless, I thank you very much for checking this out because I do appreciate your time watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.